now let's see if I can. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. All right. Let's, I just have to see. Um, and we're recording, right? Yep, we're going to record. How do I get it so it doesn't show all the. There we go. That full? Yep, that looks good. All right. All right, and then I have to figure out. Hit that now. So, okay. Well, thank you all for joining us today. We are going to not take up much of your morning. We just wanted to jump on here and explain a little bit about our kitting and gifting. Um, it's an arm of graph tech that we are getting very, very good at here in the past year of virtual events and, um, you know, still trying to engage with our clients, customers, employees uh, when they're not in person. So thank you again so much. Um, there's a chat feature. If something comes up at all in the middle of the presentation, either unmute yourself and yell at me or just type in the chat. Christy's going to monitor the chat um, and then we'll kind of just go through it. At the end, we'll do some questions and answers. So I'm going to start, start sharing my screen. Okay. Can, thumbs up if you can see it. Good. Okay, perfect. All right, uh, we're just gonna quick go through the schedule here. Um, so I'm just gonna start off with basic kitting 101. What is a kit? What goes into it? How, what kind of the thought process of how we manage that? Um, and then we're gonna talk about some packaging and finishing options, how to take your kit to the next level. So we're not just throwing things in a box. We're gonna make it pretty presentable so that when you're uh, recipient receives it, they're, they're very uh, impressed. So, and then I'm going to show you some examples, show you some case studies, things that we've done, what's worked for us, what really hasn't worked. And then I'm going to talk some gift ideas to you, how you can engage your clients, members, employees, how we can, um, you know, take this as we proceed in the year of the unknown um, of when we're going to be back in person or how we can combine in-person and non-in-person uh, events and how GraphTech can help you with that. So first screen uh, here is Kitting 101. So we at Graph Tech here, we've done kits uh, fulfillment as we've originally called it uh, for years. Uh, it's just something we do. We have a whole handwork team and a warehouse that um, has been putting these boxes and, and kind of kit items together for years. So obviously when the pandemic hit, there was a much greater need for this. Um, so we began the process of kitting. Um, I, being in the promotional products department here, kind of just naturally fell into it um, because I was sourcing the items and taking it um, to the next step with the boxes. Uh, and then Christy Wasson, who's also on this call, she became our kitting specialist uh, because she is much better with the details and she helps take it from uh, conception to final stages and part of that process is these questions. So when you come up with an event or you know, you think, oh, I really would like to do this. These are some of the things that we have to talk about uh, in the beginning, and then we can kind of narrow down choices. So first, obviously the first question is gonna be, why do you need a kit? What's the event you're having? Who's your target market? Um, these are some questions that we like to ask because not all kits are, uh, you know, created the same. There are a little bit goes into each one. Not one kit we've done or not one fulfillment project we've done has been the same. Everything is a little bit different. So kind of just getting an idea from the client, you, what you have in mind, what you're envisioning and who the target audience is. Uh, then we kind of get into some of the nitty gritties of how many do you think you need them to send? Do you have a budget to work with? Um, these are all things that help us give you examples and ideas that can fit the, for what your needs are. Um, we have a lot of people that, hey, I have sponsors for an event that they ordered 10,000 bobblehead dolls last year and they're just sitting in a warehouse. Can I include those in my kit? Sure. Everything that is in the kit does not have to be purchased here at Graph Tech. We are happy to take any existing items, any sponsorship items, any printed materials that you might already have had in storage and include them in um, your presentation box. 
Um, and then obviously we would love to help you source some items too. So coming up with some ideas of what fits, what's been working, what your market is gonna be and what they might like best in their box um, and what printed materials. So a lot of the items we're doing lately have been for conferences or events or trade shows that are all virtual. So we're including printed schedules or we're including printed uh, promotional materials that might be sponsorship related. Um, and here in this example, you can see we did for Central Penn College, this was a welcome kit. They couldn't do an in-person orientation. So every new student that was accepted to the college that was gonna start in the fall, they got this box. And it was kind of just a nice congratulations letter. Here's you know the next steps. And then that was their printed material in that box. Um, the biggest thing that we need to nail down when we start one of these projects is your timeline. Um, in the normal promotional world, Usually things take about two weeks to turn around. Um, in the kidding world, it's a little bit longer. So there is a lot of pre-planning. Um, it's not usually something that we can turn in a week or two. We need a little bit more of a heads up um, to be able to source all the materials, get them here to our warehouse, and then actually do the fulfillment of the kits, um, which you know can take some time depending on what goes into it. So that's our biggest uh, those are the questions that we usually start with when we have a brainstorming session when a client comes in and they kind of think, oh, I think I might like to do this. This is where we start. Um, but, and I think another thing that um, Stacy and I are always willing to do, and we've done this quite a bit in the past, is that we will do a Teams meeting or a Zoom meeting with with you and we're happy to brainstorm. We, you know, It takes maybe 15, 20 minutes. We, we really Try to collaborate and um, work with you and come up with some ideas so if you don't even know where to start we'll help we'll help you yep. so um, a lot of the thing you know people have ideas of what they want in their um, boxes or their presentations to their clients employees customers wherever your target audience is um, so we have found there are tons of ways that you can really jazz up um, your presentation, really make it like a, make it a thoughtful box or a thoughtful kit that's coming their way. Um, so some of these items that we can do are fully custom boxes. You can see there in the picture, these are 3D renderings of boxes we've done. They basically start as white corrugated boxes um, that are fully full color printed, edge to edge, front to back, um, and really just give that nice wow factor. The shipping label goes right on these boxes. Um, so this is what the client or you know customer receives as soon as they get the mail. Um, we also can do foam inserts or crinkle paper, um, any a lot of things to kind of package and, and make the items not shift around and, and just give that kind of wow factor when they open the box. Um, on the last slide you saw there was a custom label on the inside of the box. So uh, my budget really doesn't include enough for a custom box, but hey, let's you know jazz up the inside. So when they open up the, the box, they see a nice little label there instead of just the craft brown. Uh, we also do custom packing tape. Um, so I'm gonna show you some examples here on the next slide. Uh, oh, no, I'm not, this is first. So this is just a, a good presentation or good representation of Okay, we can put a bunch of items in the box, that's good. We could jazz it up with a little bit of a label or some crinkle paper, that would be better. Or best would be the fully custom printed box with the foam inserts. Um, so lots of levels here, and I will tell you, we've done all three of these. Um, each one is as well received as the last, so there's no right or wrong, but just wanna let you know there are lots of options here um, to go with. And then here are some pictures of some kits we've done with those finishing options. So you can see the top left is, uh, that's crinkle paper. That's what we call crinkle paper. That comes in a variety of colors. Um, it can be used on the bottom of the box, the top of the box, the bottom and top. Um, we've used this as kind of the barrier between the items in the box and the printed piece. So there you see in that picture, the custom printed card, which is personalized to the person receiving the box. They're gonna get that first. And then as they unwrap the crinkle, all the goodies are inside. Um, we've also taken plain boxes or plain envelopes like you see there and just added a nice little touch of uh, a label or a sticker. Just kinda, you know, you, people are getting the box. They wanna know who it's from. Um, and that kind of just is an easy, inexpensive way to jazz up your, your item. 
Um, there in the top right, if you have breakable items or you have uh, you know, different compartments that you need, we have boxes that have that. Uh, we're able to wrap and you know, bubble wrap and make sure all the glassware is um, you know, gonna arrive in its destination in one piece. Uh, and then the bottom right Mantec there, that's custom packing tape. So that's another way just to jazz up a plain old box. Um, so as soon as the, the person receives it, they know exactly who it's coming from. And we've done, uh, you know, just regular logos. If it's a event specific logo, whether that's a convention or a trade show, that logo can be post placed right on those as well. Uh, it can be full color, full bleed. We can make it as pretty as you like. So those are some good packing ideas there. And then here's just some other, we're just gonna go through here quick and show you some ideas of things we've done just to kind of spark your um, brain and to give you some ideas. Um, we've done as simple as, you know, the top there, you can see we put some items in a box that were all logoed. That was for a, that was for a graduation. Um, so all the graduating seniors got this kind of nice send off gift. Uh, the bottom left was actually one of the very, very first ones we did. As soon as COVID hit, um, that company said, you know what, all of our employees are working from home and we need a way to, to thank them and, and keep them engaged and keep the morale up. So they sent a box of a little bit of everything. Um, just this kind of a little, hey, thanks for being a great team member. Um, but we thought that was pretty cool with personalized notes in, inside each box. Um, we, the middle there, you can see some different col colored envelopes that we can do. It doesn't have to be a plain white or craft brown. We can jazz it up with metallic colors um, and then throw a sticker on there so you're not paying for a fully custom envelope, but it makes it look like, look like it was a little bit higher end. Um, that piece just had a printed personalized postcard with some post-it notes and some candy um, as kind of a happy holiday gift. Uh, and then we can do educational kits as well. The one there you see on the right, that's for uh, newly diagnosed lung cancer patients. So if they're diagnosed, we have these kits. They are receiving this in the mail, kind of comfort items. It has a brochure there that shows, hey, here's the next steps. Here what you, here's what you could expect as you go through your treatment um, for the disease. So again, Lots of different uses, lots of different ideas of how these items, the kits, fulfillment, um, how they can be used to target your market. Just some other ideas we've had here. Uh, food gifts have been super popular. People love food in their, in their boxes. So you can see there, that was a holiday gift we did. They got lots of fun treats. Um, we even each, there was a lot of food allergies with that. Um, client. So we had boxes specific to gluten-free, to nut-free, um, totally can be personalized to what you, you would like or need. Um, and we worked with a lot of local companies on that. You can see Elementary Coffee, McCray Chocolate, um, lots of local companies that were willing to include items in their box um, to go to. That was another employee appreciation gift. Um, and even you know cookies and uh, the K pods or K cups you see there in the next box. Um, the sky's the limit for what you can include. Uh, that is again showing you some printed pieces, some promotional pieces, and the nice orange crinkle paper, which we love. And then two more to show you here. Uh, again, just some more presentation, what you can include, kind of how these were used. Uh, that was for a Zoom meeting um, where they were going to drink hot cocoa and keep eat cookies and they kind of got some good stuff there. And then my favorite one of all um, that we did, uh, we went to Costco and we went shopping for this customer and we got all these fun snacks and cookies and um, gum and treats and the client had provided us with the lunch box. So we filled that, put a nice little printed note. This was for employee appreciation day. Um, so each employee received this lunch box full of the goodies with a nice note from their owner just saying, great job, thanks for what you do. Um, but again, these were nothing, we, we had the, the lunch boxes sourced, but everything else we're able to just go and if we need to do a Costco run, we're willing to do that for you. Yeah, and just, and just to interject here too, that, that kit it was actually sent in early March, I believe, end of February. Um, and as we get into the summer months, we just caution everybody, be, 
willing to to change it up a little bit because we don't want anything melting on the on the truck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just, yeah. The one thing we cannot send at this point is alcohol. That's the only due to PA liquor laws. Um, we are not a licensed transporter, even if the, we are the not not the ones shipping. Um, at, you know, UPS or Postal Service or FedEx would be who is shipping. Uh, we are not licensed to be able to move the alcohol from one location to a next, which could be from, you know, it arrives to our facility into another area. So unfortunately, right now, that is our only limitation of what we cannot include. But we are working, Christy's working on that. Yeah, we're looking into that. Yeah, so we're hoping to partner with a few local wine wineries and breweries um, that we could include PA items um, in our kits. So that is to be continued. Christy, anything else on the packaging or um, the kits themselves? The only thing I was thinking is a lot of times that one of the first questions that comes up is um, people ask about mailing and you know how long should we allow? And as you know, the postal service has not been as reliable as it used to be. And we can't guarantee, I mean, we, we just um, sent out a kit that got to Washington in two days, but a month ago, that might have been two weeks. So it's really the, the USPS is, is the most affordable way to ship. It's not always the most reliable. If, if this is something that's time critical, we usually suggest you think using either FedEx or UPS. It does usually come with a little bit higher price tag, but it's, it's much more guaranteed as to arrival time. So just keep that in mind as well. Um, it, we're, we are seeing an improvement with USPS, but um, it still is a little iffy and I just want to um, make everybody aware when they're planning. Um, if we want to use USPS, just maybe back up another week. Yep, good, good. Okay, moving right along here. So, okay, so we talked about all the kits and how we can make those, but what are some reasons for giving these items? So, I mean, it can be, the it ranges from anywhere from sales awards, recruitment or retention, um, safety recognition, customer appreciation or employee appreciation. Like we, those are probably the two we've done the most of um, is customer or employee appreciation. Uh, membership renewals, if you're an association, just a way to thank them for renewing their dues during this uh, unusual time that they're maybe not receiving the same benefits that they normally would have. Um, just a nice even letter and, uh, you know, decal or uh, you know anything just kind of that would be flat and easy to mail can go um, to help those just to thank them again. Uh, new hires, new students again like I showed you with those college boxes or you know from an HR standpoint anybody that's hired here's your onboarding kit. Um, we're hopefully going to get back to some in-person events here so we also can do these for for those type of events. We're doing, we're talking with the client now that they're having a hybrid event where they're gonna have watch parties um, for their conference. So in six places throughout the country, they're gonna be sending items for the, you know, PPE kits and, and safety items for the people to meet safely. And those that don't feel safe, they're gonna get a box at home um, with their items in it. So a lot of hybrid events coming on. If you're looking for a fall event or a summer event, we're happy to send out a save the date, maybe with a little, um, tchotchke or a little printed piece to go with it. Um, golf outings seem like they're really picking back up here. So people are getting out and about. It's an outdoor safe event. Um, if you have a new business location, if you're opening up a new, uh, a new site or you're moving, this is a great way for people to know your new address or, you know, kind of just remind them that you're, you're around and you're local. Um, the PPE, so masks, hand sanitizers, um, the safety tools, gloves, all of those items are still selling like gangbusters. Um, it's not, the masks are not slowing down. The hand sanitizer probably will never go away at this point. But a lot of the suppliers that we work with totally overbought these items last year when COVID first hit. So there are some great deals right now on PPE items. Um, we can get, you know, get great pricing on masks and the hand sanitizer. So if you are looking to do any in-person events for fall, um, let me know. I'm happy to show you what those prices are, kind of get you geared up for when you are ready to be back in person. Um, like I said, there's just a surplus of inventory right now that they are looking to unload. 
So that is one of the benefits of um, having all the items bought ahead of time. Um, and again, graduations coming up, promotions from jobs, anything that you would like to thank someone or, or, or congratulate them. Some of the items that are most popular, uh, like I said, in the past year, masks and hand sanitizers have been number one and number two. Um, we're seeing a drop in that a little bit. People have their masks um, and we're starting to get some normal orders back, drinkware, tote bags, um, food gifts, like I said before, are still huge. People love snacks and foods, and I know that's the way to my heart. So anybody who wants to send me a cookie, I am in. Um, and, you know, just normal notepads, pens, regular promotional items that you would have thought of before. People are still happy to receive those. Um, but these are probably our top six or seven categories. Um, it used to always be drinkware and apparel, masks and hand sanitizers, PPE have taken over the number one spot, but um, hopefully that goes down a little bit here and we, as we all resume to try and get back to normal. Stacey, I'm gonna raise my hand here. Oh, sure. Yeah, I just wanted to ask like when we were talking about the top gifts, what about like texting? What's the status of that? Texting's, you know what the, one of the most requested items from this past year that was non-PPE related was mouse pads. People are working from home, they're working remote. So some of the tech items are coming back. USB drives is another one um, that people are having to go from working at home to working in the office. And, you know, I know we work with it every day, but storage space and server space can be hard to come by sometimes. So transferring files, USBs are still as popular popular as they've ever been. So I would say tech is definitely still still out there. Um, anything cell phone related or you know charging cord related is going to be very popular. Good question. Um, so that's kind of it from my standpoint of gifts. Um, I just wanted to throw in here, uh, you know, from toot our own horn a little bit here about Graph Tech. So these are the other services we provide besides the fulfillment and the kitting. We obviously do print. We have an in-house design team. We have a uh, mail team in-house. We're right across the street from the post office. So any mailing needs. Um, we do lots of online storefronts as well. So if you're looking to purchase some of these items and we can prepackage kits, um, then your customers, clients, employees can go online and just order them. They're already ready to go. Uh, we have a publication management and a sponsorship management department. Um, working on ad selling and, and magazines and newsletters, um, you know, so that's a whole different department. And signage is, is definitely one of the bigger areas that we're looking for growth. Um, we are doing, you know, any sorts of retractable banners, table covers, signs, posters. Um, we have in-house capabilities for that with a, a new machine we purchased. So lots of good ideas here for how Graph Tech can help you as we continue to go through uh, 2021 and look for future events for fall and hopefully back to 2022 with all in-person events. So that is that. So I'm going to be quiet now. And Christy, do we have any questions? Nothing in the chat area. Nothing nope. in the chat. If anybody wants to unmute themselves and ask any questions or um, providing any insights some maybe some of the things that you're doing within your organization, if, if people are planning events, Anything coming up, uh, if they have golf events coming up, anything out, outdoors, uh, it'd just be interesting to share uh, with, the, with the group. Good morning, everybody. My name is Amadechi. I'm with the Pennsylvania Primary Care Career Center. Um, this fall, we are hoping to have a hybrid event for our career fairs. And my question is, instead of mailing the packets or kits to, directly to our attendees, can you send it to us? and we can carry them to the career fair and distribute them to the attendees ourselves? Sure. I pass the post office? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> we prefer that. No, no. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we just did that um, for another client. They had, um, they were putting together, it was actually, they were donating the items to the Central Penn Food Bank. So they asked us to take their existing items put them all together in envelopes. So we did, I think it was 2,500 different envelopes stuffed with their items. Uh, it was masks, printed materials, things like that. And then we just boxed them and they came and picked up all 25, 
hundred and you know in the boxes and they delivered them to where they need to go. So that's definitely something we can do. Um, not a problem at all. Thank you. Good question. Thank you. How is your, how is your hybrid um, event working? How would how is that structured? Yep, so we are anticipating having our exhibitors um, or community health centers attend the in-person event. Um, we are looking at hosting two events, one in Philadelphia and the second one in Pittsburgh. Um, we'd be using like a hotel type of like event space and um, separated, you know, the social distancing and everything. So the hybrid person portion comes into play. Um, during the event, we would walk around the in-person fair and just have the exhibitors do a, a brief five to, five to 10 minute vignette, talking about their health centers, talking about the jobs they have to offer, talking about their communities, and that's how we're gonna approach it. And then once we have those vignettes, we would launch them onto our website, YouTube, Facebook Live, Instagram, like that. That's how we're, we have in our heads to approach it. Awesome. That yeah, it's just nice to hear what people, how people are transitioning back, because I know everybody's itching to get back in, in person. And, um, you know, I know outdoor events, hopefully the summer will open up a little bit of opportunity to do that. So I'm just curious if anybody's planning those events yet. See, I can tell you that we are um, doing our annual conference virtually in June, but we are moving forward with our in-person uh, fall leadership conference in Erie in, um, in October. We're most likely going to have to limit attendance. I think we're expecting that people are gonna be so excited to get out. It'll have been two years. Um, it'll been two years ago since our last fall conference when people were together. Typically we don't go to Erie, but you know, our president gets to select the location for the fall conference. And that's where, you know, he selected it. But I do think we're gonna have, you know, we're estimating based on feedback from our membership, um, a larger interest in the fall leadership conference. So we do think we are going to have to, you know, limit it. Um, we are considering doing a hybrid based on, you know, how well the virtual goes, um, you know, in June. Um, but it looks like, you know, there is some interest. I think one point questions you ask at the beginning and the importance of the target audience is, you know, for us, our audience does that 60 and older. And, um, you know, so understanding, you know, what, those needs are, um, you know, just in terms of kidding or just, con you know, what are items like, I know, like in a different role that I have, I have a volunteer role with a national organization. I worked with Stacy and said, look, here's our budget. Here's our, you know, audience and our audience for that organization was super diverse. I mean, we go from Guam to Seattle to Canada. So it's, you know, it, you know, you know, for different items, some things may be more appropriate than, you know, others. I know, obviously, even we were talking at the beginning in, in weather, powder sport today is having different weather than we're having in Gettysburg, where it's like 60 and sunny, and I'm about to turn the air conditioner on. So, um, you know, I do think understanding that, you know, that audience and, um, you know, and I could just, I, I would say too, you know, we were planning to move forward with the other group that I mentioned, it's the National Association of Government Communicators, and it's all volunteer um, board that we have we were planning to move forward with it in person. And to our surprise, um, it was supposed to be in Seattle and the hotel actually canceled on us um, because there was civil unrest that they didn't know if they would get past um, because of just things going on in the world. So we did pivot. Um, the one other point I'd make on, you know, to Stacy and Christy's points um, was that um, the benefit of, we called our swag bags, not kits, but the benefit of selecting those early and knowing um, the budget and things like registration, which really benefited the members because they were able to get, you know, take advantage of that early registration rate. And we knew exactly how many kits or, you know, swag bags we wanted to order. Um, you know, so I think that those, that, that really helped us, you know, um, right after we launched, we did this really cool video and launched it about what was in the kit and all. I mean, we have I think it helps. And we, we did cut it off. You know, people are still trying to register now. Our cutoff was a month ago. Um, and, you know, unfortunately you have to make those calls, but we had to, you know, fit our budget and things like that. And it really worked for us. So you can really use it as a selling point, um, you know, as well to drive registration, which is something that we, 
you know, really liked. And again, that was a different organization than what, you know, you're seeing in my backdrop. That's a volunteer organization, but it's an association, a national association, and has the same concept. But um, I really liked how, you know, I went to Stacy and said, this is our budget. We definitely want more than one item. We definitely have this makeup of an audience, older, younger government people who move around a lot, you know, all over from Canada to Guam, what can we do? And she put together recommendations. So I really, you know, appreciated that. You know, I'm not a shopper. I don't like to, you know, try to pick out things for other people. So you go girl. <laughs> Easy. And actually, Leslie, your, your, um, your testimonial has prompted a question. Um, it, it looks like somebody's asking about whether or not there are items that are good for the 60 plus um, attendees or, or audience. And I would say definitely, yes. I know there are some definitely items that we can target in those. I know magnifying um, is, is sometimes a big thing. Um, Stacy, you might have other ideas that. Yeah, we've could... done a lot like the large word searches and crossword puzzles and things for to keeping um, brain activity engaged. That's been a very popular one. Um, I know with Leslie's crew, they, they like to have non tech items. Um, anything that, you know, notepads or pad folios, um, you know, drinkware, any basic item. Tote bags seem to be a big one. Leslie, your crew, lo your crew loves tote bags, don't they? Yeah, we use, I mean, at the, for PA State Association of Boroughs, my, to so use that as a way, cheapen it, but it's a cheaper way to um, help our sponsor. Losing her. Yeah. Um, recognize our sponsors, you know, on the bag. So yeah, that's been good too. Yeah, Leslie mm -hmm. and her crew are, do a great job of. They have their logo along with sponsors' logo, and really helps help them out with the cost. So we're you know able to do that on any of the items as well. You have sponsors that are you know they want to say oh I want to donate you know five hundred dollars, put my logo on something. We're able to help you find the items that have the biggest imprint area so that both of your logos or just their logo uh, can be prominent. So we, we do definitely do that a lot. And I know we did a kit specifically for a group that was, uh, I think, over 60. And that was a themed logo or a themed kit. And it was, you know, a, a mug with some hot chocolates and a biscotti. And and they really, and then they had the, the like Stacy said, the large print uh, word scrambles or crossword puzzles yep, and, right there yep there it is and it was kind of a, a, a themed the magnets that they could use for the refrigerators um so you know we're really big we're really excited to do themed um kits those are a lot of fun and so if you want to brainstorm on a theme we will definitely help you out on that it's kind of my thing <laughs> <laughs> it's my thing oh goodness so okay Anything else? You see any? I do know that that we're going back um, to our first live event. Um, our last one was October of nineteen. Um, the the sister company we we do conferences. We do four national conferences a year. Um, one in Hershey, and then we travel to Vegas, the Midwest, and Florida. Um, and so our our last one was uh, like I said, October of nineteen in Hershey. Um, but we did just announce that we're going back to our first live event um, in July in Clearwater Beach, Florida. So um, obviously we're limiting due to social distancing and, you know, the hotel has pretty specific requirements, but we're excited to be back in a, in a, live, in a live setting again. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I was, I'm on a board for promotional products um, association and we had our first in-person event last week, last Wednesday, um, oh. down in Philly. And we limited supplier space, we limited attendees, and we also gave each attendee an entry time. So each person had on their badge that you were either 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, or 12 o'clock. And then in the registration process, we asked if they were only stayed for their hour. Um, and it worked really well. Um, it, no one everyone stuck to, we were afraid everyone was going to show up at 10 o'clock, even though they registered for 12. Um, but it went well, people were happy to be back in, you know, out and about. Um, 
the we took temperatures we had uh stickers for each person that had their temperature that we put on their badge that said i've been checked um they you know that their temperature was correct and it kind of just another process for people to feel comfortable um you know coming back into those events so it it is it's happening slowly but it's happening one one idea that we saw um, at another event, um, we, we've not done it for our event, but I think it's a really great idea. Um, we know some folks are, are going to be, you know, com more comfortable with with social distancing than others. And so the idea of having um, different colored buttons with a key on that button, um, you know, one that says, you know, maybe it maybe it's a green that's like I'm comfortable with all social activity. And then okay. um, yellow may be, you know, I'm comfortable with just a fist bump. And then a red may be, you know, please don't come in my personal space. Oh, and I, love I, that. That I thought that was a really great idea. You know, it could be three or four categories, whatever you want, and you give everybody the button of their choice. And um, and then, you know, you just have a key so that folks know, okay, what's the red, the white, the, you know, whatever colors you pick. I mean, you could even theme it with your, with your event. Um, but I just thought that was a really great way to be able to, you know, ease back into a live event. And I just thought that was really cool. And it could be done through, you know, different colored lanyards or a button or a pin or a, you know, anything, however you wanted to do it. But I really thought that was a great idea. I agree. I love that. And it could be sponsored as well. So you could do even a sponsored logo with it if, you know, if it was something that you wanted to get some, you know, some assistance in paying for whatever, yeah. you know, whatever you choose, um, you know, we thought like a button with a with a sponsor logo on it would be great. And it's it's a great way to identify the sponsor and, you know, help folks out with with knowing what how comfortable you are with with contact, I guess. Yeah. Love that. Great idea. Yeah. Good. Anybody I don't else have, have anything that they want to share. This is great dialogue. Thank you guys so much. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we are here to help you. Um, Jeff, Danny, and Joe are all on the call. They're your and Amy, your account managers. Um, Christy and I are here for specific, you know, kidding or promotional or uh, fulfillment projects. So if you reach out to one or any of us, we we all like each other enough that we'll pass along the information. So. Um, in case anybody wants a recorded version yes. of or we need to hear it. Yep, we will definitely share that. Um, so thank you so much. Enjoy your day. And uh, we hope to hear from all of you soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.